how am I doing with my recovery? Finally turning the corner now. I think it's been about five weeks and seems like the eight to 10 weeks I need to allow to recover is about right because I'm still only at about 75%. So I started training again at the track this week. I've done two sessions and I couldn't sprint basically, but I could start to run quite fast. So, so yeah, maybe the session on Tuesday, 70%, maybe up to 75% yesterday. Um, so the hamstring is just kind of, it's like a general pain when I'm running fast. Like, I don't particularly feel it more during the swing or when the foot hits the ground. It's just sort of generally. Um, so I guess that would fit with the idea that it's the tendon and the uh, tendon is just kind of gradually recovering. It feels a bit like a recovery from whiplash. Not that I've had major whiplash, but I just sort of get that impression. It's a la lasting overall sensitivity. And the weight, weight training is going well. I've managed to go just about twice a week to the gym and I'm trying to do deep squats. I've been doing up to 90 kilograms, but only like up to two or three reps. So I'm really trying to, to basically improve my maximum. Um, I think last time I was there, I did, I did sets of three at 80. I wasn't feeling that, I wasn't feeling my top, top form. And then uh, deadlifts, you see that the squats, but well, with the squats, I've been pleased with my form. Um, I'm not sure I used to do properly deep squats, but I am now. Um, and I don't feel the hamstring when I'm doing it, but deadlifts, not surprisingly, I do feel the hamstrings. I've had to be more careful with those. So I think I was doing 70 kilograms sets of five um, last time I was there. So I'm hoping to get both of those up to 100 kilograms before too long. And I've been doing loads of other exercises in the gym. Um, so it's all pretty useful for keeping the fitness and strength, keeping it up, maybe improving it even. Um, so it's worth bearing in mind that it's only ever been a problem with my right hamstring, not my left hamstring. So you've got to bear that in mind when it comes to questions about, you know, should I have done weight training before? Would that have prevented it? And all this kind of thing. Well, maybe, but I think it's a specific problem with the right hamstring. Um, that it just needs special attention. Um, you know, whether or not I do weights, it's to do with the volume, it's to do with flexibility, it's, it's in particular to do with technique. And I suspect that my, one of the best explanations of it might be that my right leg has had to swing, to swing through too quickly because I'm left leg is slightly shorter and I also have a slight problem with my knee in my left leg and I wonder if my left strides haven't been as powerful and therefore there's less time for my right leg to be in the air before it comes down again which means it has to swing through extra quick it's that swing through a bit like the whiplash that I described before um, can put a lot of strain on the, the hamstring so when your leg swings through forwards the knee comes up for a period of time the leg then extends and uh, you're having to stop it extending and then bring it back and that's where the hamstring has to work very hard um, so here i am on top of the licky hills looking through towards birmingham that way Loads of people come up here on a hot summer's day. So, uh, yeah, I've just made a video walking over the Waisley Hills um, in the sun. Um, 
I was walking in the place where it was very rainy for my video a couple of weeks ago. You know, the cold wet weather carried on for quite a long time but it's finally changed now to, to, to clear skies still with a strong wind. So, I'm going to try and do some more videos now and uh, I really just like being out and about in the outdoors, especially in the summer. So walking videos, running videos, cycling even and obviously in this one I'm talking, um, I hope to find lots more to talk about. Maybe I don't want to talk so much about myself because it's just not an interesting enough story day to day. I'll keep you posted. Hopefully the story will become exciting again. Hopefully maybe at four or five weeks time I'll be um, recovered enough to start improving my PB again. There's someone with personal training there. Um, so yeah I want to sort of talk about other stories as well. It's fragments of stories that I pick up from YouTube and just generally from the internet. Um, it's I find YouTube generally really interesting. I'd like to talk about YouTube and what what makes what makes it tick. You know what what makes videos successful or just the whole dynamic of YouTube. To what extent it's a good thing or a bad thing. I think one of the key things about YouTube is people like a story and uh, it's a difficult one because if you're an expert in something like say you're an athlete who's about to hit the big time then you can't really sacrifice the time to do YouTube and yet that's when your story would be most exciting um, and actually I've got an example of that Noah Lyles just found his YouTube channel recently. Really kind of humble guy, kind of nice, nice kind of low-key approach to YouTube, just sharing some of his thoughts on his um, college athletes then turning pro and stuff like that. And uh, but he stopped doing the YouTube a year or two ago, and obviously since then he's become like an international star. And uh, well. I know he's one of the top athletes now. I haven't followed followed really closely, but yeah, um, if you're if you're sort of an amateur athlete, then your story might not be interesting en enough unless you make it interesting. Like you've got really good editing and just fun stuff going on. So, uh, but then also there's a lot of people. Um, post things without context so actually what, what you often want is to hear the person talking about what they're doing so like for me I think if I got 11 seconds for the 100 meters I reckon I'd get quite a lot of views because there's people that follow me and um, you know it's good for my age as well but the point is there's a story to it whereas you can look on YouTube and find videos of people running 11 seconds or 10 something but it's hardly any views because it's not interesting like you know there's thousands of people who've got 10 seconds something let alone 11 so why would anyone be interested to watch it so it's all about the story um, but the thing is there's people's channels that I find really interesting on YouTube like often the, the very the channel itself is the story like if someone doesn't post for a few months like what's going on what's happening in their life you don't really know like you don't know, would you want to know because it's someone's private life but then it's really interesting when they when they post again um, but like so I, I would if, if I was able to I'd like to talk about the most interesting stories on YouTube but the thing is, like, there's so much time to research it. You've got to watch these channels for ages, and it's a big investment to watch someone's channel. So there just isn't time. 